Hey folks, welcome back to Jamie's Locks. Um, going to be going over another double feature today. Today we're looking at the Master uh, Magnum M1 and the Master Magnum M15. These are both very, very, very high quality exteriors on the padlocks. Um, the interiors I'll get into in a minute. Uh, but they are both laminated padlocks. Uh, they have this outer zinc coating that makes it look like these are the actual bodies of the locks. Um, bit deceptive advertising there, Master. Um, inside is actually a laminated core that's a little bit smaller than what this is. Um, as you can tell, clunk, clunk, it's hollow. Uh, no matter though, they're still incredibly hard locks to get into. Uh, this is a zinc exterior, steel interior. Um, and then we have the boron carbide shackles, which are very, very, very hard. Um, so without further ado, let's get into picking them. I'm going to start with the M1. Uh, this one has a bit smaller of a keyway uh, than some other master locks, um, particularly smaller than any of their larger format locks. Um, and we're just going to start with a Peterson pry bar, top the keyway tension, and I'm going to use my... 15,000th Peterson gem and if this goes to plan this time this is actually like the third take of this video because these locks were kind of new and they kind of kept screwing up my chi on these things so there's three we'll click on two let's go back to four four gives me a click let's try one and we got the lock open so yeah, not pick resistant at all, all standard pins. Um, with master locks, when you're trying to pick them, you need actually a pretty heavy amount of tension uh, on the lock. Um, out of the box when they come, if you look down inside, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, probably not, mostly because the camera won't focus. It's just a standard kick cylinder in there. You know, it's nothing fancy. It's just like all of Master's other cores. Um, this one, I believe, is an all brass core. Um, whereas, like on the number five, it's a copper core. Uh, so, yeah. I'll just show that it's a working lock. The bidding on this, actually, I was surprised when I saw the bidding on this. It's actually, a, you know, it's a, a low, high, low, high cut. Uh, it almost looks like somebody was trying to make a challenge lock out of it. Uh, the key code for that, if you happen to find one, is 2565. Uh, but as you can see, it works fine. I mean, it's a little grindy, and it's very tough in there, uh, but the lock does work. Uh, if you need something that's physically secure uh, and you're not worried about anybody picking it, uh, very good choice for a lock. Uh, let me... Let me put this back on there so I stay organized. I got kind of an OCD thing about my locks. I prefer only padlocks when I'm working on them uh, because they're easy to just kind of do this and everything's in one spot. I tag it with the model number. This one specifically was a Master Magnum M1 XKA DLF. So we're going to set that one aside, get my focus back. And now we're going to go to its larger cousin, Bubba, uh, the M15, which is a bigger version of this exact same lock. The only difference between the M1 and the M15 is that it has a 5-pin core. For that one, I am going to use my uh, Peterson H1. Um, Peterson actually does have a gem in 18,000th, um, which are the purple-handled ones. Um, but they were out of stock for a while. They are now in stock. So if you're interested in getting the gem shape, which is one of my favorite shapes, um, in a 18,000th variety, hop on over to, uh, Think Peterson. I think it's Think-Peterson or something like that. Just Google Peterson lock picks. I'll put a link down in the description, uh, to this pick specifically, uh, in a gem variety. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Now, this lock can give me problems because the spring in here is very, very, very strong. Um, and it's tough t 
to get just the right amount of tension on, but I'm going to give it a try. So heavy tension, one is loose, two is loose, three looks like it's going to be binding soon, four is definitely binding, okay, so there's a click out of four, click out of five, let's come back through the stack, three, am I going to get anything out of three yet? Yeah, little click out of three. Let's come back to two. Little click out of two. That one pin. It's really hard to get the one pin up high enough on this particular lock, but I got it. And there you go. And this core actually, once you get it picked, actually becomes very easy to turn. You can feel the spring tension, uh, and it's very smooth. Um, not like this one where it feels like you're moving it through molasses. Um, again, it's the same deal. It's a just a brass kick cylinder on the inside. You can't really see it in that light. But nothing fancy. It's not, you know, nothing huge. Uh, it is a... Uh, doesn't use ball bearings. Um, this, you know, this particular one uses uh, two like cylinders of metal. Uh, you can kind of see in there, uh, but it does work. Um, I haven't tested if it can be shimmed or anything. I pretty much only do single pin picking. Uh, I don't normally get into shimming or anything. I'm told they're very shim resistant, even though there's a lot of room in here. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Master Magnum M1 and M15 picked. Uh, in less than seven minutes, and that's with me shooting the breeze about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, take care. Have a good weekend.